Nowadays in modern society, marital infidelity doesn't provoke too much disapproval and even less surprise, but there are still nations all around the globe that consider marriage something far more than signed paper. Marital ties are considered sacred, and their breakage is considered a crime that should be punished. In Iran, Mauritania, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, and Nigeria, in accordance with Islamic law, an unfaithful spouse is executed by stoning. Stoning is used as a punishing measure only to married people, and exclusively to women. Married men accused of adultery escape with just social disapproval. And if it wasn't enough, the authorities keep tightening the laws. A law enforced since 1992 in Iran allows a male relative of a woman accused in adultery, not necessarily her husband, to personally kill her without trial. In modern Turkey, according to the law adopted in 1996, criminal responsibility for adultery for both women and men is five years in jail. In Pakistan, a Sharia court can sentence a woman to death by hanging for marital infidelity. In Indonesia, adultery is punished by imprisonment for up to 15 years. But the harshest and probably the most elaborated execution for cheating is practiced, surprisingly, in a non-Muslim country, Papua New Guinea. In the traditionalist Madang district, according to centuries-old customs, betrayed husbands are not simply allowed, but also recommended to decapitate their wives' lovers. The wives are kept alive, but before being executed, the convicted is supposed to eat one of his lover's fingers. In medieval Europe of the 15th to 16th centuries, unfaithful wives were sent for life to a monastery or disfigured with their nose, lips and ears cut off. A death sentence for infidelity was also quite common, and we're not sure if it's worse. In some African tribes, a wife who cheats on her husband undergoes an obligatory procedure of castration and has her uterus taken out. Mongols used to cut an unfaithful wife in half with a sword. In the Tonkin Kingdom, she would be trampled by an elephant. Siamese people were much more tolerant, but they also couldn't make it without elephants. The women caught red-handed were fixed inside an elaborate construction that resembled a female elephant and given to a male to enjoy. The Kingdom of Luang in Africa prepared a quick and simple death for betrayers. The woman together with her lover was thrown down from a high cliff. The Gauls used to cover the unfaithful wife with mud and dragged her after a carriage throughout the city. In some countries, it was the husband who was the judge and jury for his wife, and could kill her on the spot if considered her guilty. This right was a remnant of the antique tradition that allowed a man randomly to kill his wife when he felt like it. Canadian native tribes used to make small cuts out of the accused woman's head, and she was then scalped. In the Eastern Roman Empire, female sinners were sold at the market square to whoever wanted to buy them. In Turkish Diyarbakir, the unfaithful woman was supposed to be killed by the entire family, and each member should stab her with a dagger at least once. In some provinces of ancient Greece, anybody could kill a woman who cheated on her husband without any consequences. Members of Guwak's Toliam, a primitive American tribe discovered by French explorers, would throw the adulterer to the chief's feet, cut her in pieces, and all the people present would feast on her meat. As you could have probably noticed, female adultery has been traditionally considered a more serious crime than male adultery. Makes sense. The result of female cheating can be a pregnancy, and nobody wants to raise another man's child and pass their estate to a bastard. So the punishment was severe, and in most cases public. So weak-willed married ladies would think twice, and once again before arranging a lover. C'est la vie. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks, and we'll be right back to you as fast as we can.